hi guys welcome back to my channel today we are doing another q a while i make this nail set that you guys see on the screen let me know if you have any questions on um, what i'm doing in the video and i'll reply in the comments and everything i'm using will be in the description of the video all right first question is which nail brand is overrated i am super interested so this <laughs> this is just my opinion i'm not trying to sway anyone or make them feel the same way but i feel that beatles is extremely overrated okay i see people posting and trying to like promote their gels all the time and they're so bad like you need at least for the ones i've used you always need um, at least two or three coats for it to be decent and most of the decent looking gels they have are always in a um like a collection so you always have to buy a full collection just for one gel i know it's mostly because people when they promote it they're getting um a commission uh and that's probably why they're promoted so much but that's the brand i feel is very overrated overhyped i think a lot of people were expecting me to say <laughs> another brand that i'm going to talk about later but if we're talking about something that's overrated overhyped that isn't that good it's definitely going to be beetles second question is if you have worked with influencers or celebrities who has been the worst to work with um i think majority of i haven't worked with a lot i think i've worked with like um five or six mostly uh influencers and so far they have all been really good experiences i feel like one that was like eh i probably would not make nails for her again would be um damn let me look i do not remember her name hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. her name is Ra Ali she was on um I think love and hip-hop I do not know which city I didn't watch that show that much so I'm not familiar with like the seasons and stuff but um yeah in 2020 I made nails for her and long story short she wanted them in less than a week she didn't know her size we kind of had to just guess and she never wore them never posted about them and um I'm looking at the screenshots right now. I don't know if I'm going to share them. But, uh, yeah, she she wasn't rude or anything. But, yeah, I just remember sending her tracking. Like, I sent her a nice message. Like, oh, here's the tracking or whatever. And she just left me on red. And she literally never talked to me again <laughs> after she got the nails. She didn't even wear them at her baby shower. I remember, like, looking for the pictures. And she didn't even have them on. And I had paid at that time, um, I had paid extra. Mind you, she didn't pay anything. She didn't even offer to pay. Um, yeah. And sh I paid uh, for shipping to get them to her because she's based in New York and I am in California. So it's like as far as you can get within the US. So I wanted her to get them for her baby shower and yeah. That's probably like my worst experience. Everyone else I work with was very, they were very kind and they all paid. And yeah, so that's probably the worst and I would not make nails for her again. <laughs> Next question is talk about Colorland gel, which is hilarious because if you guys have been watching any of my videos for any amount of time since I've started making press ons, you know that especially in 2020 and 2021, Colorland gel was like my main gel. It's still currently my biggest collection, but I actually stopped buying it and supporting the business in, I believe the end of 2022, beginning of last year, 2023. And that's kind of a number of reasons. Um, the first reason is because um, this is my personal opinion, by the way. I'm not trying to... I think she closed her... I, last thing I saw, she recently closed her business. We'll get to that. Um, but I just feel like... I hate... I hated how the launches started to get. When I first started ordering from her, her website was pretty much always open. 
so I would always be able to order some gels and then it was like once 2022 I think that's when the change happened she would only launch her gel sell her gels like twice a year and I'm sorry but if you want to have like an exclusive business where you only open a certain amount of time like go open a clothing store go start a jewelry line like what you're selling is a necessity why why only sell it you know a couple times a year i again in my opinion feel like it was just kind of money hungry like she was in a way forcing people to have to spend a couple hundred dollars just for her um gel polishes but that's my opinion and uh yeah so that's one reason the second reason is i run a press on group on facebook and i had someone share email exchanges with her or it was her assistant but like she she the owner i'm talking about of colorland gel she sometimes has a tone that's like it's kind of like condescending and the assistant this um person was writing to sounded just like her so i feel like maybe it was her and she just like said it's an assistant to like i don't know make the business sound bigger but the person was really rude basically uh, her order was messed up so she wrote them she's really nice i saw the emails they fixed it and then they, uh, when she got her order it was messed up again so she, obviously you know she contacted them and they basically the assistant basically told her like um not to order from them anymore <laughs> and it's like how are you gonna tell someone to stop ordering from you when you keep making the mistakes i just thought that was very like i don't know just put a bad taste in my mouth i just got tired of the launches that's probably the biggest thing like the um i love her gel polish it's bomb gel polish but you're only gonna sell it once or twice a year and the fact again that i saw that she closed her business i personally don't think she closed in that damn business i think she about to pop up with something again and you guys are gonna go crazy and give her all your money and you're gonna fall into the trap but there is better gel polish there is just better gel polish brands out there next question is how often do you come across rude customers and how do you deal with them I have been extremely blessed to never come across a rude customer. Now, I'm talking like people that order from me. People, the only rude people I come across are people that potentially want to order and they get mad when my website says sold out or I think that's the biggest thing. I'm trying to think of other reasons why they're rude, but the rudest people I came across are usually the ones that want to order but haven't and uh, other nail techs i probably have the worst experiences with nail techs we'll talk about that um in another question i believe we have but yeah i have the sweetest customers ever except for one and i'm going to answer that in the next question so the next question is has a customer ever tried to scam you before if so what was the outcome now this story <laughs> this person who like this story is about might watch this and i'm sorry but like it's a story i have to tell because it's kind of crazy so i have this customer she she has been following me since my makeup days if you guys know i used to do like makeup looks before i started my nail business and she you know followed me like myself and then once I started a press-on business, uh, she followed me there. The thing with her is she only orders um, when I'm running a sale on my basic one color sets. So she, I don't think she's ever ordered an actual design. Could be wrong, but from my memory, I don't think she's ever ordered like an actual design. I don't think she's ever spent that much money. And yeah, I have no issue with that, by the way. Um, I don't expect anyone to like drop hundreds on press-ons but for the sake of this story and the situation I want you to keep in mind that she only orders when I'm running a sale on my basics and I believe she's only ordered twice um yeah let me pull up my screenshots because I think I might put them on the screen should I put them on the screen I think I might but basically she ordered uh, so what happened was this past june i always run a sale in june because that's my birthday month and 
she ordered i did a buy one get one free on basics and she placed an order um about let me hold on let me look at the screenshots all right so what had happened was she ordered for me got her two basics buy one get one they were delivered to her on june 5th 2023 and on june 8th 2023 she sent me a message and it said hey i just wanted to let you know that the blue ones broke within a day and i wasn't even harsh with them whatsoever i am absolutely not trying to complain or anything so please don't think that i just wanted to let you know what happened and what we can do about the situation i love and support the hell out of you mama always of course however as i said is there anything that can be done let me know now i want you to go back and read the part that says i just wanted to let you know that the blue ones broke without a within a day and I, I i i i i wasn't even harsh with them whatsoever so my reply to her was hey girl what do you mean they broke can you send me pics please so i can see and these are the pictures i got now now mind you mind you these nails were on these nails are three days old. Three days. Three days. They look like they were chewed. They're dirty. They're disgusting. I'm sorry if she's watching this, but they look nasty as hell. For three days on a grown woman's hand, they look bad. And she added, also, I didn't mean I, lol. I was typing fast. I don't know how you type fast and put I instead of my friend, but you know there's that I gifted them to my best friend who lives with me and that's what happened and I mean I was straight up with her I was like yeah I'm not sure what to do in this case these nails look like they've been through it to be honest and it's only been three days plus those tips are made out of gel not plastic so I'm not sure how a just tip a tip just came off like that if you look at the picture it's not like a crack don't get me wrong I don't think that my nails are like superhuman cannot be destructible or cannot be broken or anything but this nail like has a bite mark okay it's not cracked down the middle it's not like chipped it's i see a damn bite mark on it it's kind of crazy and the, the excuse was she was just putting clothes into the dryer and the thumbnail cracked again that looks like a bite mark not a crack but yeah I don't know i told her i would try to remedy the situation that's all i completely understand yada 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 my set is fine and my thing is like basically i don't think i have the rest of the screenshots yeah but basically i told her no <laughs> like i'm not going to um do anything about this and the crazy thing was that blue set again it was a buy one get one order that blue set was the free set so like what am i gonna do i'm not no no again i don't want to say she attempted to scam me but like i feel like there's not truth there wasn't a truthful thing going on so that's the only time that's happened though that's the only time someone has told a little fib or tried to scam me next question is worst influencers who tried to get free stuff let me tell you something the worst influencers the worst of the worst that are going to be in your dms asking for free stuff are going to be the girlies that are between mm, 100k 10k those girlies right there they are going to be in your DMs selling their ass off. They're going to make it seem like they are doing this for you. They're going to, they want to promote your wonderful business in their pictures. Yada, yada, yada. Want the free nails. Those are the worst. Do not fall for it, you guys. Do not fall for it. Um, I never give nails away for free, except for obviously the first time with um, Raw Ali. But that was like only a few months into my business. I didn't know better. I know better now. And I'm going to tell you, do not let any influencer make you feel like you're, she's doing you a favor by promoting your nails. 
these influencer like influencer um marketing is not as great as you probably think it is i recently um sold nails to miss christy sarah um one she reached out to me and she paid for her nails she's so kind this has nothing to do with her but i want to use this situation as an example because she has over six million six million followers on instagram um and she shared my nails she didn't have to she paid for them she did not say anything about me and but i appreciate that she did and um my business did not blow up you know i got followers i did i got a good amount of followers but you want to know how many sizing kit how many cells i made before you order for me you have to order a sizing kit so just keep that in mind you want to know how many sizing kits i sold off a, a content creator that has over six million followers on instagram i sold eight eight sizing kits and i know to some people that's like wow that's a lot mm, when they have eight or six over six million million followers eight you know counting on your fingers eight it's not a lot again i made these nails for her not for um like clout followers sells she didn't even have to promote me i was not expecting that at all and i'm super appreciative but i'm just using that as an example again to show you guys that just because these people have a good amount of followers does not mean that they're gonna blow up your business these influencers especially these small ones these ones between 1k and 10k they just like your nails and they want them for free so they're gonna try to pitch to you like they're doing you a favor but in reality they're not there was also an influencer that just got put on blast because she uh dm'd like 10 different press on artists asking if they would send her and her three friends free nails for their trip to hawaii and she sent this same message copy and pasted it to 10 other press on businesses now imagine all 10 of us sent her four sets of nails 10 times four what's that 40 nails do you think she's really going to be able to promote 40 nails nail sets her and her friends no imagine how dumb we would have felt seeing her promote other businesses when we knew we sent her some nails like no don't fall for these influencers they just want some free stuff they're greedy don't fall for it this next question isn't like a messy juicy one but it is a question i get it i get often 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 and it is how do you wait let me see how do you do your sizing like how do i figure out the size numbers for small medium and large i get this question so often and i'm i like you guys just google just google it just google press on custom press on now sizing look at go to images on google you know how to do it and you will see the sizing all right there it's like there's no secret formula all us press on artists pretty much have the same sizing chart just just do that that's what i did that's all you have to do it's super simple i get this question i kid you not at least once a day on any any of my platforms i get on tiktok or, or youtube or instagram and either a comment or a dm like it's so easy that's all you have to do that's all just google next question is how do you take your pictures and also how did you get customers so quickly so for pictures i take them all on my iphone nothing special i have a 12 pro max um yeah and i just take it on there for how did i get customers so quickly i have been making press-ons before they were as trendy as they are now of course there were other press on artists i was not the first one but um it was nowhere near as overpopulated um as it is now and when i first started i shared everything i didn't just pop out with my business i shared um buying gels trying designs i was making tiktoks months before i started selling them like if you scroll oh i don't have that tiktok anymore never mind um 
yeah my old tiktok i used i was posting tutorials and all kinds of press on related videos two or three months before i started selling them and so um once i did start selling them i uh people knew people were ready and yeah that's pretty much how i got most of my customers and obviously as time went on more people uh, came across my business and started ordering but that's like the trick i talked about this in the last q a like if you're an everyday regular person you're not like a celebrity or an influencer with already a huge following you cannot just pop out with the business and it's going to be successful and amazing like we have to kind of start our brand and our business um beforehand so if you have any plans to start a press on business make your account now and start documenting on it post like you have hundreds of followers watching and i promise you it will come next question is how did you get your clientele to the point where you can be so picky with orders you take like you won't do christmas nails how is your business able to still thrive i want to be picky too so she asked this because i think the day before like days prior i posted on my story that i wasn't going to be doing any christmas designs and that's just because I don't care to do the same snowflake design that you see everywhere around Christmas time. Christmas nails are just like, they're basic to me. I just don't care. And I think, I don't think that's being picky. I think that's just having a preference. And I've never really gotten into holiday nails. The only holiday nails I genuinely enjoy are Valentine's Day. And that's because pink and hearts is my thing. But I don't do most holiday nails. You'll go to my page, you'll probably see a couple Halloween nails because my like loyal customers asked for them, but that's the only reason why I did them. Um, but yeah, as an artist, you are able to have a preference. If you don't want to make an art, you don't have to. Um, that's the best part about being a business and being my own boss. If I don't want to do something, I don't have to do it. And the second part of this question is, how is your business able to still thrive? I want to be picky too so one reason is because i i still i save my money to the point where i can take weeks off and i can take time off i don't hurt for sales um all through december and i still post on social media and my customers still order nail sets they don't only order just because it's december doesn't mean you're only doing Christmas nails, you're only selling like no. Most of my girls, they do not care for holiday nails and I guess I'm pretty lucky with that, but yeah, just because it's a holiday doesn't mean you have to do those nails. So hopefully that helps. And again, when you're your own business and you're an artist, if you don't wanna do something, don't do it. That's on that. Next question is, how long did it take for you to see results in your social media business marketing? um i this question is kind of hard because like i don't post on social media and think of it as marketing ever like i just post content because in this day and age that's how you run your business that's what helps you and i feel like if you put so much pressure on it to be marketing and trying really hard for sales people can see through that people can see when you're like hurting for a sell because i see that on other business maybe like i don't know you have to have like i don't know i will see other businesses and i'm just like it's coming off too thirsty for a sell i feel like that's when marketing is overdone just post on social media because you want to because you enjoy it if you don't like making content if filming videos is not your thing but you're doing it because you have to market your business it's gonna come off that way i think you just need to find a way to enjoy content if that makes sense you know what i mean like if you like to watch day in the life videos of anyone not just a nail artist like there's a, a content creator you like to watch their day in the life videos make your business videos like that you know what i mean like make it like that sell a lifestyle as a nail artist that will bring you customers if you like to watch tutorials but you don't really you're not really good at filming them just practice 
and I feel like those videos always perform the best when you're not trying so hard. That's why I like when a video that you don't really care for and you didn't work that hard on always performs better than one you took hours on because I feel like people can see, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, I don't, there's no time frame. I didn't, I've just been posting since I started my business in 2020. I post whatever I want, however I want, and it does well. So, I mean, just do it. Just do that. Next question is, what do you feel is the key to being successful at this press on game? I think one key is being original. Um, I've seen a lot of new artists, new press on artists that have just created their business in the last year. Um, they copy so, so much. And I'm not talking about designs recreating designs that's not an issue i'm talking about i've seen girls copying word for word the way i caption my reels yes i see that i don't say anything but i see it i've seen people copy word for word what i post on my story um pages i've seen people copy word for word what i post on my website it's so weird be yourself be original so much better and i think another key is also um just being really nice to your customers treat them well um don't be instead of focusing on getting one cell focus on how you can get those customers to come back i think that a lot of people think like oh i just need to get that quick sell that quick sell and it's like no the biggest um thing that you really should focus on is making those customers come back and want to order from you treat every customer like they're freaking Beyonce ordering from you be nice to them um and yeah I think that's that's a huge thing I have so many customers I'm going to show a screenshot and this isn't to flex at all this is just to show you that people that genuinely love your work and support you they're going to come back I'm going to show a screenshot of my top um customers how many orders they've placed it's crazy I've had one girl, she's bought over 50 orders, or she's placed over 50 orders, and she spent over $3,000 on my press lines. That's crazy. So yeah, that's probably the biggest key. If you take anything from this video, treat your customers well, and focus on getting that customer to return, not just getting that one sell. Okay? Next question is, what do you suggest for creative block? Any tips? For me personally, um, I follow way more actual nail artists that like work on, on people, like a nail tech, that work on clients. More of them than I follow press on artists, so that's a big thing. I feel like if you only always see press on nails, your nails are going to be looking like everyone else's, like follow more nail techs, nail artists that do different things. And I feel like personally they bring just way more inspiration to me. Another thing is Pinterest. I love looking at art on there, not just nails. I'll like look up abstract art and look at different colors and textures and stuff like that. Um, smoking weed. I mean, I wouldn't tell everyone to do that, but if it's, <laughs> if you're grown and it's legal where you live, that helps me out a lot um also vintage cakes with the heart cakes i love looking at those because the colors i just get like color combo ideas from there so like i don't know i i just pull inspiration from a lot of different places so yeah those are my little tips and i think that's gonna be the last question i don't think i can even fit any more into this video i hope this video helped i hope you guys enjoyed it for the nail set I was making while um, I read these questions, if you, again, if you guys have any questions on what I did, leave them in the comment section. And for everything I used to make this set, it's going to be linked in the description of this video. Um, I hope you guys like this and I hope it helped you again. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Bye!